Thank you so much uh, during on this Sunday worship. Uh, may you be able to bless the remnants uh, where uh, they can resolve inside of their hearts uh, that inside of their lives that it'd be um, only the gospel, um, that it'd be only Jesus inside of their lives, Lord. Um, so many times the world and our, even ourselves, the families and friends around us, uh, and we see so many times that people fall into, uh, fall into idol worship, uh, fall into uh, the standards and the ways of this world, uh, that fall into Satan's traps. Uh, but God, may you be able to equip uh, these remnants with, a, with the spiritual strength, uh, with spiritual intellect, um, and uh, with, uh, with the faith uh, to know that um, their entire lives are within the hands of the sovereign Lord, of the sovereign God of you. Uh, may they be able to resolve in their hearts to never defile themselves uh, to the ways of this world, to the, uh, to the things of this world, to the I idols of this world, uh, to the Nephilim age that, uh, that Satan continues to use uh, to deceive these remnants. May they never fall, um, but fall before all of those, um, to all those things that Satan uses, Lord. Uh, during this time of worship, uh, may, 
the attitudes um, and the, the, the attitudes and the hearts of these remnants that have gathered for worship, may they be able to be melted and fixed uh, onto you. May they be able to really experience the power of the gospel. May they be able to really experience uh, the love of Christ, uh, the love of God as they worship here all together. We thank you so much, and we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Tom, can you turn on the TV behind you? Gracias, Señor. All right. You guys can stretch your necks, stretch your shoulders a little bit. Let's wake up a little bit because we're going to continue, okay? All right, here we go. We're going to sing This Is The Day, and we're going to have a little bit of fun with it, okay? We're going to go this side. As always, this side first and then that side. Good? Fonzo, you got me? You feel me? All right, let's go. All right, here we go. This is, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Celebrate, celebrate the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, celebrate the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Here we go. This is the day. All together. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has rejoiced, rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord. So let's sing that again. Celebrate, celebrate the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, celebrate the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Here we go. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. One more time. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice.
We're going to continue here. Summit time. All right, you guys can all stand up. All right, Tone, do you know this one? You know this one? Okay, Tone, I'm going to ask you to help me this time. Can everyone see Tone? Everyone sees her? Punzo, can you see her? Because I feel like Daniel's in your line of, in your, directly in your line of sight. Good? Okay. All right, here we go. All right, God has called. God has called you and me to be in this covenant journey. All the nations That's our final destination For the world to be There is only one to answer It's the King Love of God Jesus is the Christ His power alone So no matter what happens to you Do not let it shake or affect you Focus on God is with you and have some time. You have God's answer to come in. You're on this journey. We're all together. We have oneness. We enjoy Him and you will some time. God has called. God is journey. He will save all the nations. That's our final destination for the world to be. There is only one true answer. It's the King, the Love of God. Jesus is the Christ, the power of Lord. So no matter what happens to Focus on God is with you and have some time. You have God's answer, look up there. You're on this journey. We're on a way to stand before kings as the witness of the Christ. So no matter what happens to you, do not let it shake or affect. Song God is with you and have some time. You have God's answer to come in. You're on this journey. We're on our way to stand before kings as the witness of the Christ. Some time. Simple, right? Getting the hang of it? Dan, you got the hang of it? All right, solo time? No? Papi, you got the hang of it? Papi? So, so, so? All right. Now you guys got to get, you guys have to get the hang of this one. All right? Are you TC answer? Do you know this one? Okay, all right, good. All right, here we go. All right. You guys want to sing a lower or higher? Lower? All right. All right, there is something in me. All right, here we go. There is something in me that steals my joy and my peace. I'm lonely and weak. There is something in me that steals the answer from me. It's the conflicts with people that I need. There's something in me that steals the blessing from me. It's the way
practice and the future will show God's masterpiece. All of this is every remnant CBDIP. There is someone in me who gives me joy and says every remnant CBDIP Calvary here we go Calvary the mouth of all his marks of Peru heavenly mandate calling and mission rifle needed absolute one heart for Continuation, only unique to three creation, 24 and 25 eternity in Christ. Everything's my covenant answer, every work a part of my vision in the place where you put me. That is my dream. Every person. Every rap that's CBDIP. That's her. Got the hang of it? So, so? So, so? How many you got the hang of it? This one's, this one's harder. Michael? All right. We're going to keep doing this every week until you guys can until you guys can master the lyrics. Sounds good? Okay? All right. Tom, you can sit down. Uh, you can go back. No, you guys can all stand because we're going to continue, okay? All right, here we go. Now we're going to have now we're going to have a little bit of fun, okay? Deep down, okay? Here we go, deep, 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 oh, deep down, down. Deep, deep, oh, deep down, down. Here we go, do you love your Jesus? Deep down in your everyone, first round. Deep down, let me hear this. Deep down in my heart, now my right. Do you love your Jesus? Deep down in my heart, right side. Deep down in my heart, deep down in my heart. Deep down in my heart, right side. 
Jesus, let me hear just the girls first. Deep down in my heart, now the boys, do you love your Jesus? Deep down in your heart. Deep down in my heart, do you, do you love your Jesus? One more time, the girls. Be down in my heart. Now the boys, do you love your Jesus? Deep down in your heart. Go. Deep down in my heart. Deep, 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 deep down. Pay attention to what you guys are wearing, okay? Jesus, deep, 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 Deep down in my heart, do you love, do you, anyone wearing a hat? Deep down in my heart, do you, do you love your, anyone wearing a hoodie? Anyone wearing glasses? It's just fall. Deep down in my heart. One more. Do you love your cheek? Or anyone who has uh, animals on their shirt? I don't even know what that is. Is that a... Is that like a... Deep down in my heart. Deep down, one more time, everyone. Do you love your Jesus? Deep down in your heart, everyone. Deep down in my heart. All right, you guys all can be seated. All right. Does the remnant know whoever it is that that is uh, does whichever remnant know if it's their turn for congregational prayer? Okay, it's Lydia. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Okay, all right, let's sing one last one. Okay, and then we'll have Lydia come up and pray for us. Okay, God is so good and He's so good to me. God is, God is so Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Please bless the teacher, Jenster, and give him the double portion of the Holy Spirit to give us the message for this week. And don't let Satan de deceive us while we're listening to the worship. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Remnant Lydia, for praying for us. Okay. Now, I want you guys to take out all of your stuff. Okay. And let's pray together here at the Apostles' Creed. All right. Let's close our eyes. Let's fold our hands. Let's pray together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is uh, seated at the right hand of the Father, where I come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Open up to Sunday. I'm good to go? All right. Success in worship. Three, two, one. May you open my heart to receive your word that I may devote myself to the pastor's teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. May you grant the five powers to the pastors. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Three, two, one. Being obedient to the point of death for God's word and following the heart of Jesus Christ who died on the cross, may you allow the answers and blessings of 100% obedience of the word received from today's worship. I confess that Jesus Christ is my master. May you receive all the glory. Lord God, three, two, one. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Her for vengeance missions, three, two, one. May you give me the word to boldly open my mouth and proclaim the rightful words, mystery of the gospel. Amen. Okay, everybody close your eyes really quick. Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Okay. Show of hands. Who attended this week's Wednesday message? Wednesday uh, worship. Raise your hand. Okay. Keep your hands up if you attended Friday worship. Who attended Friday worship? Raise your hand. All right. Everybody put your hands down. All right. You may open up your eyes. Remnants who didn't raise your hands. Let's restore ourselves and succeed in worship, okay? It's important to stay in the flow. Got it? All right. Sit up straight, back off the back of the chairs. I have to switch battery. I understand that we're busy. Remnants who couldn't come to worship. But... You're just going to get busier and busier and busier 
And it's going to be harder to succeed in worship as you get older. straight back off the back of the chairs and inhale with your nose oh even now the triune god is at work always and forever even now god is working by his spirit and his word father even now the christ is getting rid of the three curses disasters hell satan and accomplishes salvation as the son and even now unseen to rise the holy spirit is working upon us as the spirit deeply enjoy this exhale with your mouth Inhale. Hold. What is arising right now? Our background is heaven. The time we spend in prayer is the time we bring God's kingdom here on earth. To bring God's kingdom means while we're praying, invisible to our eyes, God mobilizes angels for his errands. Exhale. Inhale. Oh, you have an amazing authority, which means power from above. You begin to break down the background of hell, forces of darkness, and Satan. Exhale. Inhale. Oh, then five great strengths will be made for you. Spiritual, intellectual, or mental, physical, healthy, healthy body, financial, offering, Man or communication, power, exhale. Inhale. Hold. There is something more important than all of these. Not only your heart, but your brain will be strengthened. Only then can you become summit to on your studies. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Heaven. This is our background. By the mystery of the triune God, enjoy God's kingdom here on earth. Then we'll go to heaven. Just wait for God's kingdom. Then it will come. Everywhere you go, God's kingdom will come. As Joseph waited, God's kingdom came. He went as a slave into prison, but he was able to wait. Exhale. Inhale. Old. Hell. We don't die and go to hell, but people are living a hellish life on earth, having the background of hell. They go to hell when they die. Satan continues to follow them and torments their life, and at the end, he drags people to hell. Exhale. Inhale. Old. Angels with the background of heaven, angels are ministering God's work. When we die, they usher us to heaven. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Spiritual state. What's more important than answers and school is my spiritual state. This is where everything begins to be solved. Help me to have a healthy spiritual state that rides the flow of the covenant and is filled with the Holy Spirit always. Help me to listen to the voice of God and not the words of people or the world. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Church is the shadow of the throne of heaven in the path to which we get there. Let's succeed in worship. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. People that remnants must meet and become leaders with the gospel, successful people with the gospel, fellow workers with the gospel, 
How can we become like this? So by succeeding in worship, staying in the flow. Come on, exhale. And relax. Okay, let's pray a remnant's prayer for the church. Three, two, one. Dear God, bless the pastors to be only the gospel, evangelism, and prayer. Bless the church officers to say the remnants, church, field, regions, occupations. Bless the young adults to be prepared as church officers. Be the hands and feet of the pastors and the platform for the remnants. Bless us to have the imprints, roots, nature of the word, prayer, evangelism, missions, and academics. Amen. We pray for our pastor, evangelist, servant of God, to be only word, prayer, evangelism, and not just our pastors, us too, only. Elders, stake the rest of their lives to save the church, right? So if our parent is an elder or a senior deaconess, this is what we pray for. Elders, our senior deaconesses and our deaconesses, our moms, to sacrifice themselves for the church. If our mommies are not doing this, then we have to pray for our mommies. If our mommies are not succeeding in worship, does that mean we should not succeed in worship? We have to succeed in worship at least, right? There you go. Hopefully you guys are worshiping together at home, right? Deacons, if our dads are deacons, then we pray for them to help the church, help everything run smoothly. If our dads are not doing this, should we pray for them? Yeah, we should, right? If our dads aren't succeeding in worship, does that mean we should not succeed in worship? No, right? We as remnants should at least be examples or models even for our parents, okay? Please, remnants, please be different. Don't grow up to be just like our parents. We gotta be even better, right? Start now. All right, and do we need a pat, pat, pat on the back, back, back for a job well done? No, whatever we're doing, we're, we're doing it for God. Give it, your, give it your all. If church comes second and school comes first, then you lost, remnants. Don't lose, win spiritually. Do what God wants. Our lives are just like the seven remnants. But if school and the world comes first, then it can't be. Okay? I'm saying this with a, like a sad, frustrated heart. If, I'm, if it sounds like I'm being mean to you, I'm not. It's because I know. All right? Young adults, to become the elites and save the elites, right? What does it mean to be elite? Does school need to come first and work comes first? No, church and worship first, God comes first, and then you will be successful in the world. I'm telling you, don't flip the order. And remnants, ever since we're young, right, we're not doing what we just want, but we're rooted in Christ. Right, CVDIP. And how can we be spiritual, skill, cultural summit to save the world, not follow after the world? Don't you want to lead the world? Summit time, that's very important. Hopefully you guys are doing summit times at home with your prayer books, right? Uh, you guys should be so used to your prayer books so that whoever comes up here to do congregational prayer, um, not just praying, God, fill teacher Jinster with double portion of Holy Spirit. Uh, make Satan not deceive us. Yeah, those are awesome prayer topics, but there's so many other prayer topics and important ones in your prayer books. So mention the year long message, right? Jesus life, Jesus power to experience working of the Holy Spirit, right? We see it every single worship. So whoever's doing congregational prayer, um, pray those important prayer topics in our prayer books, right? If you're doing it every single day, then it should be in your hearts and your thoughts and in your prayers. Let it show. Summit attitude. Teacher just was mean to you. 
Should we just think? All right. Mm, I don't like teacher Jinster anymore. I'm not going to listen to him. I don't care what he says. I'm my, I'm a rem, I'm myself. I'm going to do what I want. That's not right. That's some attitude. Whoever's up here giving message, take it as God's word. Some vessel, right? If someone's mean to you, uh, so oftentimes uh, we have scars. Overcome it. Make your heart bigger, 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 and bigger. ATV, wherever, whenever, with whoever. Today's message is Daniel. That's it. Short title, Daniel. Please write this down. Daniel. <laughs> he just realized. Daniel's life will just Daniel's life will be just like Daniel's. Everybody done writing this down? Okay, today's Bible verse, Daniel chapter 1, 8 through 9. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Daniel 1, 8 through 9. Thank you for bringing your Bibles. Give it like 30 more seconds for people to find it. And then we'll read it together in one voice. Good job. Now, the person who found it, make sure they're not, we're not running in the hallways today. Saw a couple of remnants running around like crazy in church last week. You know who you are. So, no running. All right. Eight and nine. Let's read it together in one voice. Three, two, one. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused the official to show favor and sympathy to Daniel Lazar. Please, lesson objective. Uh, different versions, same meaning. Jesus' life, Jesus' power, his experience, working out of the Holy Spirit. Daniel, C V D I P, emphasis on the C. That's the important part today. C V D I P, all of it's important, but what's most important? C. So make sure you circle, underline, make it even bolder, bubble letters, just make the C stick out. Your missionary, Deborah. All the remnants stay in the flow of the worship. If not, you're going to stray off path. And then you get a little older, go to high school, college, and then you're, you'll be nowhere to be seen in church, right? We don't want that. You older remnants, think about the remnants who failed to succeed in worship, and they're not here now. Do you have a couple people in mind? Do you have a couple people in mind? Yeah, we don't want that. Stay in the flow. Save the church. Be role models to your parents. Come on. 
First point, my C, V, D, I, P, emphasis on the C. So, speaking of C, what do we need to see first, ahead of time? Yeah, we have to see something in advance first. What do we need to see first? What's, well, okay, if you don't know, I'll tell you. C, we need to see C first. What does C stand for? Covenant, right? Covenant is God's promise for us. Jesus is a Christ. You receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. We will do the work of establishing God's kingdom. We will be witnesses to the very ends of the earth, saving two, three, seven nations, spiritual healing. God will bring us to the summit. We will raise remnants. But these are all promises that God's given us. So we need to see that first. We need to hold on to that first. Jesus Christ, answer your solution to all problems. So that's an important part. If we hold on to see or covenant first, God will take care of the rest. How can we see the covenant first? Through God's word, through worship, through prayer, through our summit time. What is Satan going to do so we don't see, see first? He's going to distract us with so many things. Schoolwork, our friends, uh, whatever programs that we're in through our parents who put us in those programs. Yeah, he's going to work like that. Don't be tricked. What do we need to have first? Just like this little panda. That ball is his. He's not letting that go. What do we need to have or possess first? Well, if C is the first one that we covered, what's the next one? B, right? So we need to have a vision ahead of time, right? What is our vision? What did God promise us? What is this? We, W-E, world evangelization, right? That's our vision. That's our future. God promised the end will come once the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached to all nations of the world, right? That's our vision. That's our mission. That's our future. And you know what? Daniel saw, not you, Daniel, but Daniel saw the future ahead of time. And we're going to talk about that today. What do we need to enjoy first? Do we enjoy, oh, time with our family. Enjoy, oh, time with our loved ones. Oh, enjoy um, a relaxing time by myself with the people I love. What do we enjoy first? Okay, we, we covered C, V. Next is, yeah, someone said dream. That's right. We need to enjoy the dream God's given us. Right? Do you have a dream? Well, we're going to talk about a couple kings today who had dreams that they didn't enjoy. It tortured them. But we need to have a dream, just like Joseph had his dream of world evangelization, we need to have a dream, too. What's your dream? My dream? Well, what was Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream? I have a dream. Yeah, that all children of all colors will stand hand in hand. Did that dream come true? Yeah, I guess. But what's our dream? Uh, my dream is to become a soccer player, just an example. Okay, is that a dream God's given you? Or is that a dream that I'm holding on to? Right? The dream God's given us, it has to come from God's word, from the covenant. Sometimes we might get tricked. We might even trick ourselves. Oh yeah, I'm doing what God wants. But are you really? You gotta be careful. Okay, we need to win ahead of time. Another word for win is conquer. So we need to conquer, win ahead of time. How do we do that? Remember Elisha, he won ahead of time. He didn't even have to fight. And then God sent horses and chariots of fire to protect Dothan, Remnant City. How do we win ahead of time? I, 
right? What does I stand for? Image. image. Now, what does that mean? Like maybe like Google Images, like picture? Well, how do we draw a picture or image for what God wants? Mm, let me give you a hint. Pastors need to focus on what? Only word, prayer, evangelism. Whoopee, right? To draw an image that God wants, to see the picture that God wants, it's holding on to God's word and actually praying. So whoever's keeping up their summit time through the prayer book, yeah, that's holding on to God's word and praying, right? If you're, if you're unable to do that, then I don't know if you have an image. But who am I to judge? Right? Who knows? God will still use your remnants. Next point. There's something that's fulfilled. Do you know what fulfilled means? Like it's, like it's finished. Like it's finished ahead of time. God already did something ahead of time. What did he fulfill ahead of time? He finished everything already, right? He solved original sin through, by coming as a Christ. He promised us world evangelization. He gave us the Holy Spirit, which is power. So is world evangelization already taken care of? Yeah, everything's taken care of. Your remnants, lives are already taken care of. So do we need to worry at all? Mm -mm. All we got to do is he put it into practice. Now actually do it. We know we have to succeed in worship. Then actually do it. We know you have to do some at time. But actually do it. Okay? I know I have to read the Bible. I know it. Then actually do it. Right? If you don't put it into practice, then when, when it's time for God to actually use remnants, you can look for remnant. Hmm, wh which remnant will actually do what I ask him or her to do? And then whoever puts it into practice and actually does it, then of course God's going to use that remnant. Actually do it. Actually do what you know you're supposed to do. Now. Because if you get older, it's going to get harder and harder and harder. Right? Next point. Daniel resolved in his heart. He resolved. That means he put it into practice. Okay, God, I'm actually going to do it. What did he resolve in his heart? Let's find out. Daniel's staring at the screen. And he's not writing. Okay, anyways, there is a, there's a king, King Nebuchadnezzar. Long name. Nebuchadnezzar. So he, took, he, he overthrew the king of God's people, the Israelites. And he captured them. God's people were captured. Uh-oh. Why were they captured? Uh, yeah, I think they lost hold of the covenant. They lost hold of what God wanted, right? Maybe they, yeah, I guess they worshipped idols and themselves. So, yeah, they were taken captives by which nation? Starts with the baby. Babylon, yeah. And he even took, uh, like, the things that were in God's temple. Like, I don't think he stole Ark of the Covenant, but some other gold, silver articles. He took it and put it in the temple of his God. Uh-oh. So he took a couple of those items from the ark, I mean from the temple, from God's temple, stole it, and then put it in his temple of his idol. I don't think God, I don't know about that, but I know something bad's going to happen. Okay, and he also decided, you know what? Choose some young, handsome, talented young men. Train them by teaching the Babyl Babylonian language, Babylonian studies, Babylonian literature, books. And for three years, train them, and then they will work for me in the palace. Okay, now, 
of those boys, there were a couple that were chosen that happened to be remnants. Hmm, I guess God had a plan. So the king said, choose some talented young men, train them for three years, and they will work for me in the palace. And who was, who was chosen? Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, also known as Belteshazzar, which is Daniel's Babylonian name, Belteshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Okay. Now, God made it so that, oh, the officials of Babylon, they liked these guys. They liked Daniel and his three friends. Hmm. Do you think God moved like the king and the official's heart? Yeah, right? God, God will move the hearts of non-believers to like the remnants. All right, right. Okay, well, Daniel knew the reason why God's people were taken captives because they lost hold of the covenant. And then what the king said was, okay, we're going to feed them food, wine that is used for idol worship, and then we're going to feed it to them every single day for three years. But Daniel said, uh-oh, God's not going to like that. And then he talked to his, the person in charge of his group. Um, we don't want to eat the food, like the meat and the wine that was used during idol worship. So the person in charge said, then what, what are you going to do? And then Daniel and his three friends said, okay, we're just feed us vegetables and water, and let's test this out for just 10 days. And if we're healthy by the end of 10 days, then just feed us vegetables and water for the entire three years. And then the, the official got nervous. Uh-oh. If I, if I disobey the king's commands, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to die. And then Daniel said, it's okay. Cool. Just be cool. Chillax. Let's test it out for 10 days. And what do you think happened? For 10 days, they came out to be even more healthier and more strong af at the 10 days. So the official's like, okay. And then for the next three years, Daniel and his three friends just ate vegetables and water, and they were healthy, right? Do you think God blessed them with physical strength too? Yeah. Why? Because he resolved in his heart, uh, uh, I'm not doing idol worship. I'm going to do what God wants. And you know what? God gave Daniel and his three friends more knowledge, more understanding, more wisdom than everybody else. It says 10 times more than like the other people. Hmm. So three years passed by, and the king brought Daniel and his three friends and then the other young men to work in the palace and the king found that he he and his friends were 10 times more smarter wiser than the magicians and the enchanters of babylon 10 times more so did god give them spiritual physical mental power yeah sure did why because they already knew the reason they knew the reason that god's people were taking as cap captives. Why? Because they lost hold of the covenant. Right? They didn't hold on to Jesus being the Christ anymore. They didn't, worship, they didn't worship God anymore. They didn't care about God's word anymore. They were taking captives. Right? Daniel and his three friends knew that while everybody else didn't. They also gave no excuses. Right? They knew, you know what? God, you brought us here to Babylon to work in the palace, but it's okay. I'm not going to give excuses. I'm going to still focus on only you, give it my best, and stand as a summit in this field. Right, Michelangelo? All right. So us remnants, we have to get rid of the, the bad habit of giving excuses. I didn't, I didn't come to worship because I had this and that. Yeah, so does everybody else. Are we going to be like everybody else? If you want to be used uh, like Daniel and his three friends, 
let's not really give excuses, right? And we all do, right? And you know what? Even if they were facing problems, Daniel and his three friends, they brushed it off. It's okay, God. I'm not going to give excuses. You're training me. You're preparing me. It's all right. Brush off problems and conflicts. Brush off what I want. Just like that weird man. And they had a different reason, right? While all the other young men, young boys were, mm, yeah, I, I want to work in the palace so I could eat good food, have nice clothes, live a comfortable life. But then Daniel and his three friends had a different reason. <gasps> God, you brought me into the palace to work for the king for the sake of world evangelization, to save Babylon. They had a different reason. We need to have a different reason. Uh, okay, so we all go to school. We all do sports. We all are in arts and craft, whatever programs that we're doing. Okay, so, so do your classmates. But do you, are you there for a different reason? I hope so. What is it? Who is it? Better to be acknowledged or like complimented by. Who do you who do you want uh, to to recognize you? People, lots of people. They're like, oh, wow, Paul. Yeah. Or do you want to be just acknowledged by God, even though many people don't yeah, clap for you? It's better to be acknowledged by God, right? Do what God wants. Not what I want, or my family wants, or my classmates want, my friends want. It's better to be acknowledged by God. Right, Michelangelo? Yeah. Next point. The Lord worked upon Daniel. Let's see how God worked in Daniel's life. Okay, so King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he had a nightmare. And in his nightmare... There was this huge statue, head made out of gold, the, the torso made out of silver, the waist out, made out of bronze, the legs, the feet made out of iron, and then all of a sudden this like meteor, this meteorite, came and destroyed the statue. And he wakes up. So I guess one of Daniel's talents was also interpreting dreams. Kind of like, who? Like Joseph. Eh. Okay, so King Nebuchadnezzar wakes up from this nightmare, and then he brings in his magicians and sorcerers and enchanters, and then the king is like this. All right, I want you guys to tell me what I dreamed about. And the magicians are like, what? No, king, you have to tell us the dream, and we'll, tell, we'll try to tell you what it means. But king's like, mm -mm. you tell me what I dreamt about. And the magicians are like, that's impossible. Nobody could do that. And the king said, okay, if you tell me what I dreamt about, even though the king didn't share, if you tell me what I dreamt about, I will give you my kingdom, I'll give you gold, I'll give you glory. You tell me. You tell me what I dreamt about. Tell me what I'm thinking. Paul, what am I thinking of? It's kind of like that, right? And the king said, if you don't tell me what I dreamt about and tell me what it means, then you're going to die. The magicians were like, what? That's not fair. That's not fair at all, right? So the king decided, you know what? Off with everybody's head. Kill Daniel, his three friends, kill all the wise people, all the magicians in Babylon. Do it now. Uh-oh. So somebody went to go pick up Daniel and his three friends to kill them because the king went crazy. So here is, here is the king demanding the wise men, but nobody could do it. It's impossible. But uh, this is where a remnant's going to come and solve the problem. 
Get him, Kenny. All right, let's see how God uses his remnants. So Daniel found out once because the soldiers came and said, um, sorry, Daniel, but the king wants me to kill you guys. And Daniel's like, okay, wait, uh, let me go talk to the king really quickly. And then the king, Daniel went to the king and said, king, just give us some time. Just one, one night, one night. And then what Daniel and his three friends did was um, they prayed together so that God could tell Daniel what he dreamt about. And do you think God did it? Yeah. So while the three friends were praying, while Daniel was praying, uh, God showed Daniel what the king dreamt about. And Daniel said, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so Daniel went to the king and told him what the dream was about and actually what it meant. There's Daniel, the king. Uh, so he, he was talking about gold, silver, bronze, iron, clay. It just means that eventually, king, Babylon is, is strong, but eventually it's going to crumble, and there will be kingdoms after that. Simple, huh? And then the king bowed down to Daniel. And then the king made Daniel and his three friends officials, leaders inside of the palace and over Babylon. Wow, look at that. Remnant comes, gives an answer, brought to the summit. Look at that. So Daniel's like, um, can my other three friends also be leaders? And the king's like, of course. <laughs> All right, so eventually, uh, the dream came true, and then King Nebuchadnezzar eventually fell. Uh, and then new king came up, his son, King Belshazzar. <laughs> now, King Belshazzar uh, was having a feast or a banquet, a party, with like a thousand people. They're having a good time. And you know what? Uh-oh, he made a mistake. He said, all right, go to the temple. Get some of the cups that were in the temple, of God's temple, and let's drink out of it. And they praised, what do you think they praised and worshipped? They worshipped gold, bronze, silver, right? Things. It's not God. And then all of a sudden, they look at the wall. This is, must have been a big banquet hall because it's just, there's like a thousand people there. A hand came out of nowhere and these two fingers started writing on the wall. It's like a ghost, right? A hand came out of nowhere and wrote some weird language on the wall and then it disappeared. Imagine how terrifying that would be. There's Belshazzar. And it said he was pale in his face like he saw a ghost. Have you ever seen a ghost before? Or something scary like a ghost? Or maybe like a ghost on TV or in a movie? If you see it, it's scary, right? You get pale. And it said his legs were shaking. His knees were shaking in fear, right? It's like when T.U. Jinster was playing, what, that zombie game in the playground? And then, and then I was chasing it after and scared a remnant. And then this remnant is like, ah, I think I have to go use the bathroom. Because she was so scared. Yeah. So there's this writing on the wall, but nobody could figure out what it meant. The so king's like, okay, I'll give you everything. I'll give you a purple robe. I'll make you third in command after myself and I guess the, king, the queen. But you'll be third in charge, kind of like Joseph. But nobody could find out what it meant. And then he said, I'll make you third best in the kingdom. And then the queen came and said, wait a second. Uh, I think Daniel could do it. So they brought Daniel. And then the king is like, I'll give you everything. I'll make you third. But Daniel's like, oh, no, no, king, I don't want it. It's okay, you can give it to somebody else. But I'll still tell you what it means. Look at that, classy remnant. He wasn't tricked. Yeah, no need for that. I don't, I don't need anything. And then he told him what it meant. It says, uh, God's going to punish you, king, because uh, you lifted yourself up before God, you worshipped idols, right? And he told them what it meant. Let's see what it means. 
So it said, I don't know how to pronounce it, mene, mene. And it said, God, number your kingdom, put an end to it, tekel. Uh, God judged you. And Perez, your kingdom will be divided. And then the king said, oh, he gave him a purple robe, made him third in command. Uh, too bad. Do you know what happened that very night? Yeah, he died. Oh. Yeah, he did die. But Daniel was still made third in command. Uh, the new king. There would be a new king. So this new king, King Darius, I think he was like 60-something, 60 62, when he became king. Uh, king Darius, so he's the third king that Daniel served under. Uh, and you know what? Everybody liked Daniel uh, because God was with him. Whatever he did, it went well. Wait, kind of like Joseph, right? So he was put in charge. Uh, there was like, this king chose like 120 people, 120 leaders, and Daniel was in charge of like all of them. So now the people under him, they're getting jealous. Uh-oh. They, they got jealous of Daniel. Wait a second, I want to become powerful. I want to rule the kingdom just like Daniel. So they came up with a plan. Here are the troublemakers. They conspired a plan, and they, they said, oh, I could find, we, can, we can't find anything wrong with Daniel. Wait a second. Except Daniel always worships God. Hmm, how can we use this to our advantage? So they came to the king, King Darius, and they came up with a plan. And what was the plan? It says, for the next, was it 30 or 40 days, uh, if anybody worships a different god other than you and the god of Babylon, then they should be thrown in the lion's den. Now King Darius is like, oh, yeah, I like that. Wait a second. I think that's self-centeredness, right? Hmm. Some people liked being, like being worshipped, right? But, eh, it's not really a good thing. But anyways, uh, Daniel found out about the new law, and then he's like, eh, oh well, whatever. I'll just do what, I'm, what I always do. And he prayed. He did his scheduled worship, summit time, just like he, as he always did. It's not like he did extra just because the law passed. No, he, just, he was just doing what he was normally doing. And they found out. Those three troublemakers. Now is our chance. Uh, King Darius, we saw Daniel. Didn't you say that nobody's supposed to worship any other god for 30 or 40 days? Look, you signed it. And the King Darius is like, uh-oh, we made a mistake. Because whatever he signs with his ring, that means he, even the king can't take it back. Uh-oh. So he has no choice but to throw Daniel into the lion's den. And King Darius was very upset. So sad. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I made that silly mistake. Daniel is one of my favorite people. And now he has to be thrown in the lion's den. Uh-oh. So they took lion, uh, Daniel away. And before uh, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, the king was there. And the king said, may your God, who you always serve, rescue you, deliver you, right? And then he was thrown into the lion's den. Hmm, Let's see what happens. Ah, lions, lions are scary, right? Don't you think they were growling, and hissing at Daniel? I'm sure they were. Look at that. Uh, yeah. I'm sure they circled Daniel like they're hunting their prey. I'm sure they did that. I'm sure they, they roared at Daniel. But... For some reason, even though they're growling and hissing and roaring, uh, they just started getting calm. They just sat right by Daniel. He's like, oh, and Daniel probably thought, oh, that's interesting. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
right? Because he knew he was in innocent. He didn't do anything wrong. He probably hugged him, used him as a blanket. But during that, during that entire night, the king could not sleep because he's worried. But you know what? This is part of the law too. If someone's thrown into the lion's den and the person survives until the next morning, that means that person can be pulled out and then that person's safe because uh, I get God saved that person and that person's innocent. So, no, the king can't sleep. God, God whom Daniel serves, please save Daniel. And then early the m next morning, right when the sun rose, he ran. The king ran to the lion's den to see if Daniel was okay. And he said, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you always serve, able to rescue you? And now he's waiting for a response. And Daniel responds, right? The way he always greets the king. Yes, my king. My God sent his angel to shut the, the lion's mouth. They didn't hurt me because I was found innocent before God. And I've done nothing wrong to you, my lord, my king. And the king was so happy, so relieved. Yeah, Daniel said, yeah, I'm good. I'm down here. I'm good. I'm alive. God saved me. The king was so happy. Mm, little kitty cats. Okay, now the king's like, okay, where are those three troublemakers? So he got those three troublemakers threw them in because they made up a lie to kill Daniel. And then before they even hit the ground, the lions uh, pounced up, grabbed them, and ate them all. Imagine how hungry they were, right? The angel was closing their mouths all night. And then the king said, you know what? The God that Daniel serves, the entire kingdom will worship Daniel's God. Wow. Look at that. Does that remind you of a different story where remnants survived death and then the king made the entire nation worship God? <laughs> okay, Esther, who else? The three friends, remember? Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were thrown into the fiery furnace. Yeah, same thing. Look at that. Yeah, everybody will worship the God of us our remnants, right? Daniel, that's right. Everybody will worship your God, Daniel. Yeah. All right, so God gave Daniel power. This is the last point. Power given by God. What's power? We can do everything through Christ who gives us strength. Did God give Daniel and his three friends strength? Sure did. When they refused to eat the, the food uh, of idol worship, wait a second, is that a, a, a choice that God's happy with? Oh, yeah. You could put your leg down. Hmm, good choice. Yeah, so make decisions that make God happy. And of course God will give you power to the point that they just ate veg veggies for three years, and they were even more healthier and smarter than everybody else. That's by God's power. Why? Because they made a resolution for, oh, not Wally, -E, for W-E. What does W-E stand for? World evangelization, right? If we make a decision for world evangelization, of course God's going to give you strength. God will give you strength, for sure. Of course. That means of course in Korean. Yeah, of course God will give you strength. All right, so now Daniel prayed three times during scheduled prayer, right, because he was holding on to God's word. If we're uh, in monkey bars and pretend the floor is lava, are we going to let go of the monkey bars? No, right? We need to hold on to God's word, like, to that extent. But we hold all the other things. We shouldn't. Right? We need to hold God's word, God's covenant. If we decide, God, I want to only hold on to your covenant, only your word, then 
do you think God will give you strength to do that? Of course. Yeah, God will give you strength. Of course. Yeah, make, make a resolution in your heart. When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den because he refused to stop worshiping God, don't you think God will take care of him? Yeah, that was a decision that God was happy with. And God did save him. Yeah, shut the, the lion's mouths. Of course. Yeah, God will give you power uh, to be his witness. Of course. Of course. All right, video time. God's story, Daniel. So part of God's story is about a guy named Daniel, and it goes like this. Daniel was a Jew, which means he was part of God's special family. But when he was a young man, a king called Nebuchadnezzar, let's call him Nezer, came in from the city of Babylon and took over. He chose the smartest, strongest, most handsome Jewish men to leave their home and come work for him in his palace. One of those young men was Daniel. Even though most people in Babylon didn't follow God, Daniel and his friends did. So they had to figure out how to obey God and serve the king. For starters, they had to go through a training program where they were fed royal food. The problem was, King Nezer had also offered that food to idols or false gods. And since they followed God, they wanted nothing to do with idols. So, Daniel had an idea. He asked the chief of the king's staff if he and his friends could eat vegetables and water for 10 days instead. If they got too weak or skinny, they'd eat something else. Well, guess what? God made them even stronger than the men who ate royal food. God gave Daniel extra understanding, too. In fact, a few years later, the king had a nightmare. Nobody knew what it meant. Daniel told King Nezer that he would ask God to show him. God did. After that, King Nezer adored Daniel. He even said God was pretty great, which was a big deal, because the king didn't even think about God before that. But soon, he made it hard for Daniel to follow God again. That's because the king built a huge gold statue of himself, 90 feet tall. Anybody who didn't bow down to it would be thrown into a furnace. This time, Daniel's friends were the ones in trouble. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They told the king, the God whom we serve is able to save us. But even if he doesn't, we will never worship the gold statue you've set up. So they got sent into the fire. Well, pretty soon, the king looked into the furnace and noticed that there were four men, and they were walking around. An angel of the Lord was protecting Daniel's friends. They got out alive and didn't even smell like smoke. God didn't stop them from getting punished, but he did go through it with them. The king had never seen a god who would rescue like that. Afterwards, King Nezer didn't mind if Daniel and his friends worshipped God, but the king still worshipped idols, too. So God sent him another dream. And Daniel told him what it meant. King Nezer would live in a field and eat grass like a cow for seven years. In other words, he'd go crazy until he realized that God is the only one we should worship. Kids, God doesn't want everybody to worship whoever they want. He wants everybody to worship him. Anyway, Daniel kept working for other kings of Babylon, even after King Nezer. God continued to help him understand dreams and visions. And even though he had to give a lot of bad news, Daniel did excellent work, and he was really well-liked by the kings. In fact, one king named Darius liked Daniel so much that others got jealous. They tried to get Daniel in trouble. But they knew the only way to do that was to make a law against God. They suggested that everybody pray only to King Darius. That made the king feel important, so he made it a law. Anybody who disobeyed would spend the night in a den of lions. Daniel kept right on praying, though, and when King Darius found out, he was sad. He didn't want to punish Daniel, but now it was the law. He said, may your God, whom you serve faithfully, rescue you. And guess what? God did. He sent an angel to shut the lion's mouths. Daniel served four important kings, and he followed God. But whenever it came down to obeying God or the king, Daniel chose God every time, no matter what. And even though Daniel had to do some really hard things, God was always with him. And that's the story of Daniel. So in case you missed it... One more. Stories of the Bible. Daniel in the lion's den. This is Daniel. Oh, hey! Who was a Jewish man who was taken to Babylon when he was very young. Daniel loved God and followed God.
God's rules. He talked to God three times a day and asked God for help often. Daniel served in the Babylonian king's court for many years. Yeah, I know him. And under many kings. Hey, Daniel. Daniel always proved himself to be more capable than all the other court officials. Daniel, I think. Wow, hey, God. Daniel was serving under King Darius, and because of his great abilities, the king made plans to place him in charge of the entire empire. Wow, okay. The other court officials searched for some fault in Daniel, but they couldn't find anything wrong with him. He was faithful, responsible, and completely trustworthy. Yeah. What? The court officials realized the only way to get at Daniel would be to challenge his faith. Come on! So they went to King Darius. <laughs> and advised him to make a law that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone except King Darius will be thrown into the lion's den. I like it. King Darius signed this law, and once a Babylonian king signed the law, it could not be overruled. When Daniel learned of this law, he went home and knelt down, as he always did, to pray in his room with the windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he always had done, giving thanks to God and asking for his help. The officials went to Daniel's house and found him praying. Gotcha. They went to the king and reminded him of the law. I remember. Well. Then they said that Daniel had been found praying to God three times a day. What? When the king heard this, he was very upset. Good. And he spent the whole day trying to think of a way to save Daniel. By that evening, the court officials came back to the king <coughs> and reminded him that no law signed by the Babylonian king could be overruled. So at last, the king gave orders for Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den. The king said to him, May your God, who you serve faithfully, rescue you. Then the lion's den was sealed shut with Daniel inside. The king spent the night fasting and couldn't sleep. Then very early in the morning, the king hurried to the lion's den. He called out, Hey Daniel! Was your God able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, Long live the king! My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight. The king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be taken out of the lion's den. Then the king ordered the men who had schemed against Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den as punishment. Daniel was safe. There was not a scratch on him, for he trusted in God. Ta-da. Okay, prayer for 237 Nations. Today we're going to pray for Bhutan, which is like 75% Buddhist. That means most of the the nation, Buddhist. Cambodia, like 97% Buddhists. Why are all these Asian countries Buddhists? Anyways, let's pray for these two nations. Three, two, one. Dear God, may you bless Bhutan and Cambodia so that the gospel may enter and revive these nations. May disciples arise and shine the light of the gospel here. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And Daniel would pray on his own because he didn't pray with us. Go ahead, three, two, one. Let's hear it. The prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, pray. Amen. Okay, so during, when we split into our groups, uh, we're going to stop writing, uh, what is it, Second Kings? We're going to start writing Daniel chapter 1 and Daniel chapter 6. Okay? So if you didn't finish last week, the verses that were assigned this month, just don't worry about it. Start Daniel chapter 1. Hold, 
please keep up your prayer books. If you need it stapled, if you need another one, just let me know. Homework that's due next Friday. What's wrong, Lazars? Uh, so the young kids, they, they all sing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the alphabet song, while they wash your hands. Yeah, so the older remnants, uh, you guys could do Lord's Prayer, because it seems like some remnants did not memorize Lord's Prayer yet. So please do the Lord's Prayer as you wash your hands. There you go, Lord's Prayer. Oh, happy birthday, Hobbs. Oh, what happened, Hobbs? Cute little Hobbs. And then now she's all grown up. And now she has a mustache. Oh, and Addie. Happy birthday. Yesterday. I recognized Addie to the left, Addie to the right, but I'm not too sure about the two middle girls, so I just put a birthday cone on both your heads. All right. Uh, birthday girl, can you do offering today? The offering bin is right there on the table. So get your offerings ready, and after offering, uh, we'll do Lord's Prayer, and then we'll pack up our stuff. Oh, that side. All right, let's pray the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll walk quietly through our classrooms. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for this day, our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against ourselves. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.